So these past few days, I was supposed to be benchmarking the 9800X 3D system that I built or the test bench that I built with the MSI X870 Tomahawk, benchmarking a library of games. As you guys know, I'm working on that 40 game benchmark video that will include the 14900K and the 285K. But instead, I ended up coming across a terrible issue that um, I ended up just wasting a lot of time with. It's just a really bizarre problem, and I can't believe it still exists to this day. It completely drove me up a wall. It took me quite a while to find out exactly what it was. Uh, eventually, I did find the solution, but um, yeah, it, it was just crazy. Hopefully, you guys can take this away as a lesson or learn from it that, yeah, this issue, um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy your FPS. So we're going to unwind what happened. We're going to jump into all of that. I'll show you guys how to solve it. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can move on from that and I can start continuing to benchmark video games. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. A bit of a different format compared to the usual uh, voiceover format that I do. Um, I'm not really big into talking head videos. I personally think that if it's just mainly the content you guys are after or whatever topic it is we're ta talking about, I'd rather just show some B-roll footage or relevant um, trailers or gameplay footage or whatever. I don't know. I just thought I'd try something new. You guys can let me know in the comments um, if you guys prefer it. Um, if it gets a little bit more, like, I guess, of a personal touch for the channel, I guess something that was missing from what I was told. So I thought I'd just try it out. But uh, anyways, I wanted to make this video because um, I wanted to spend a bunch of time these past few days just benchmarking the 9800X3D with the MSI X870 Tomahawk motherboard that was sent over to me. And um, yeah, I was looking a lot forward to it because as you guys know, a lot of people dubbed the 9800X3D as the gaming CPU king. Um, it gives you a lot of great performance, a lot of smooth performance. And so I was really looking forward to trying that out. I wanted to compare it to my 14900K, which I've tuned. And um, yeah, I just wanted to see what the results would be like and then provide those results to you guys so you guys can get some better insight on it from a large variety of games with tuned systems. Um, but instead, all of that time got wasted because I came across this really, really weird issue that, uh, yeah, I just didn't believe that uh, it was still a thing. I did run into it a while back. We'll get into that more later on. But yeah, I'll show you guys how to solve it. And I wanted to first just talk about what exactly was going on. So I built the system, I installed a fresh install of Windows 11 24H2, did all my usual deep loading of the operating system, installing my uh, monitoring stat uh, programs like Hardware Info and MSI Afterburner, overclocked the GPU that it was usually using on my um, 14900K system. Um, so I did all of that. And then I started installing the games. Well, they're actually just on a drive, so I didn't actually have to reinstall them. When I started getting into playing some games or testing them, um, I noticed there was this really weird micro stutter. So with this micro stutter, when I was doing my benchmark runs, I was noticing the average frame rate was high, like it was higher than the 14900K, but the 1% lows and the 0.1% lows were just absolutely horrific. Um, it was really obvious too. You could easily notice it. It was very jarring. Now this gameplay footage will give you guys a better idea on what I'm talking about. Here we have Baldur's Gate 3 at 1080p high settings since we're testing CPU performance with my 4090 and tuned DDR5 32GB 6000 CL28 memory. And this is a game that ran really well on both my 14900K test bench and this was one of the first games I tested. And we're doing a run through Act 3 and you'll notice that the FPS counter is showing a really high frame rate. Like the average FPS looks awesome, but you'll notice that the 1% lows are much lower and you can see that there is this stutter or this dip, so it's not as smooth as the frame rate counter implies. This is why 1% lows or minimum FPS is so important to take into account. Here's another example. This is a Plague Tale Requiem, and we're doing a run through the town you get to in the second chapter, where there's a lot of NPCs, and you'll see the FPS we're getting is very high, leading to a high average FPS. At a glance, that looks great, and someone who's not so much in the know when it comes to testing or benchmarking may overlook the problem here, but again, you'll notice the same thing. High FPS leading to a high average frame rate, but when we turn on our 1% lows counter, you'll notice that they're really bad relative to the average FPS. But again, you can see from the frame time graph that there are these dips, or in this case spikes in frame times, resulting in this jarring micro stutter, and the experience is not as smooth as implied by the high FPS figures. 
And in this case, it was very, very noticeable. So I was, I was totally confused by what was going on. So there was a whole list of troubleshooting steps that, you know, I was following to first narrow it down. So the first thing that came to my mind was I, I had tuned my memory and used a few tweaking features within the BIOS. So that was one of the first things that, um, I, I, I alluded to thinking that the problem was, uh, where the problem came from. So I, I turned off the Expo profile or not the Expo, but I do pretty much disabled all my manual uh, RAM tweaks that I did completely stock that didn't solve it. There was this latency killer option, which I did mention in my uh, review of the 9800X3D and the X870 Tomahawk, which caused the high latency. It did say in the description that this could cause some issues with your CPU. Um, so I disabled that, still didn't fix it. Um, I was using PBO as well, disabled that as well, still didn't fix it. So the next thing I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go with a fresh, clean slate. I completely uh, went to optimize defaults and then I ended up clearing the CMOS and then I didn't even look at the BIOS. I just went straight into Windows and then I thought that I'll probably try the game now and then hopefully it's better. Still didn't fix it. So then I'm like, okay, clearly it's not an issue with any of the tweaks I did and I spent a lot of time stress testing them. I used a lot of different memory uh, software like Carhu and Memtest and TestMem5. Test Mem I did um, OCCT for the CPU, a um, bunch of Cinebench runs. So I did a whole bunch of field testing and it was all stable. I didn't experience a single blue screen, no game crashes or anything. It was just this weird micro stutter I was getting. So then I thought, okay, maybe it's, it's the GPU installation. So I completely did a DDU of my GPU drivers that didn't solve it. I tried the different power plant profiles. I tried ultimate performance, high performance, balanced. I tried all of them. I tried different BIOS versions. I tried the Agiza 1.2.02a version that well, a lot of the reviewers were using. So I thought maybe with the latest one, there was an issue. Um, there was an X3D gaming mode that MSI also introduced with the latest BIOS. Um, and that actually made it worse because all it does is essentially just disable SMT on your CPU. So I don't really recommend using it. I think it's meant to be used with like the higher core count CPUs that have dual CCDs. So the 7950X3D and obviously the upcoming 9950X3D because the uh, 3D vCache is only on one CCD. So it causes like scheduler issues. So that's what that uh, that's for. Um, so I don't recommend using it on an eight core CPU, but nonetheless, that didn't solve the problem either. Yeah, so there were a whole bunch of things I was trying. Honestly, it got to the point where I was starting to lose my mind. I even saw this one obscure thread from the MSI forums where someone was saying they were getting issues or stuttering issues with their CPU. And someone replied to him saying, oh, it's the network driver. So you have to revert back to an older one and his problems went away. So I tried even that, still didn't fix it. So honestly, I was just at a, at a complete loss. Like I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was at that point thinking maybe it's, uh, I'd have to resort to a fresh install of Windows. But I didn't think that was likely going to solve my problems because if anything, a lot of people praise Windows 11 24H2 for Ryzen CPUs. Um, when it first came out with the uh, scheduler updates, a lot of people were saying their performance had improved. Hardware Unboxed made a video about it. A lot of people did. And uh, I didn't think that, I don't know, I'd have to reinstall Windows again. But I don't know, could be that there was a issue with the install. I was dreading having to do another install of Windows because this was already a fresh install on a new SSD, but I thought perhaps something got messed up during the install process that fell through the cracks or maybe I made a mistake somewhere while I was deep loading it. And that's the thing, I do quite a bit more for my OS than the average user would, and then I have to reinstall and set up all the programs again. So to do that again would just be a lot more time wasted. But then again, I had already spent so much time trying to do other things. So I thought I'd give it a shot anyway. The other thing I was thinking about doing was going with Windows 10. A lot of people seem to say that Windows 11 doesn't matter which update you're on. If it's 23H2, 24H2, it seems to cause a lot of issues uh, with stuttering and their scheduling updates or scheduling issues. Um, so I thought maybe I should try Windows 10. I never really ended up going through with a fresh install of Windows and because I just wasn't really confident on that solving my problem. I'm glad I didn't because that would have wasted even more time and the problem ended up lying elsewhere, which we'll get into in a moment. Uh, there were some other things I was trying, resizable bar, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. I didn't want to touch those either because a lot of games actually re require those settings to be on. So you'd essentially be crippling the system a lot by uh, disabling those features. So I didn't want to go that route. I did do it, but, um, it didn't solve it. Um, so I did come across a Reddit thread, which was talking about 
a setting in MSI Afterburner. And MSI Afterburner is something I use on all my systems. I've been using it forever since I've been building PCs. Um, it's a great software because you can easily tweak and tune your GPU and it has the ability to monitor stats. But I came across this old Reddit thread which was talking about the power monitoring causing issues for them. And this is the Reddit thread I had stumbled upon. Notice the date this was posted, a little over six years ago on September 11th, 2018. And the user here mentioned that they were experiencing micro stutters for a while in different games so similar to what I was experiencing. In their post, they linked a document with some release notes that NVIDIA had released for a driver around that time. In those notes, they have a section that states Windows 10 issues, and one of the points says using power monitoring in GPU monitor tools causes micro stutter. And this user reported that turning off GPU power monitoring completely got rid of their stutter. At first, I was thinking that this probably isn't the cause of my issue because I had been using GPU power monitoring from Afterburner on my Intel test bench and I hadn't had any issues. Plus, this is from six years ago. It says Windows 10. This is probably fixed by now. But at this stage I was pretty much slinging whatever at the wall to see what sticks and I was getting to the point where I was fearing could there be actually something faulty with my hardware? Am I going to have to RMA the 9800X3D? That would suck since it's so hard to find right now so I didn't really want to go through any of that. Though I said what the heck as a sanity check I'll investigate this. So as an alternative I downloaded CapFrameX which also utilizes PresentMon API so you can benchmark games and monitor hardware stats. So I had completely closed Afterburner and launched a Plague Tale Requiem which was a game where the stutters were frequent and noticeable and did my normal run. And <laughs> I, I couldn't believe it. My 1% lows shot up by nearly 50% and even my average FPS went up by a bit as well. But furthermore, I also noticed our 0.1% lows saw an even larger increase. We were looking at a staggering 116% increase which is pretty mind boggling. Another game that I tested out was Hogwarts Legacy, a game that has been known to stutter on many systems, and even here we're seeing pretty considerable increases in our minimum FPS. The average FPS only improved by like 4%, so if someone was only glancing at an average FPS counter, they'd overlook what was going on. However, the 1% lows increased by 20%, and our 0.1% lows see a whopping 30% increase. So again, we're seeing much, much better performance, much smoother gameplay, it's a lot more consistent. It's become pretty clear that this problem pertaining to hardware monitoring software, in particular MSI's Afterburner GPU's power monitor, is very detrimental to your game's performance. To disable it, all you have to do is launch MSI Afterburner, open up the settings menu, click on the monitoring tab, scroll down to power and uncheck that box, and I guess to be on the safe side you can disable power percent. But there's also a lot of other things that I don't care about in terms of monitoring that are also enabled by default and are just taking away resources from your system so I recommend just checking them off. Another thing I'll mention is that it only seems to affect certain systems and not all or certain combinations of hardware. I have a 5800X3D system and that system doesn't seem to be exhibiting this behavior. In my personal rig I have a 14900K and a 3090 and that wasn't exhibiting the problem. I'm just surprised that after 6 years though this problem can still occur. I'm not sure if this is an issue from Nvidia's drivers or something that MSI needs to address. One thing you guys do have to keep in mind is that even though Afterburner has MSI's branding on it, the software I believe is developed by a Russian developer. And I do recall during the start of the Ukraine-Russia conflict, there were some issues regarding finances between the two parties, and there were rumors that Afterburner was going to be discontinued. In any case, MSI, if you're watching this, I hope you guys are able to find a solution. And what I would suggest is that future releases should not have the GPU power monitor enabled by default. And when somebody goes to enable it, there should be a pop-up disclaimer telling the user that they may experience performance degradation. For that matter, I think a lot of the excess stuff should come disabled. And do you guys want to know the kicker in all of this? I was scrolling through the comments on that same Reddit thread. And I found a comment that was left by me six years ago that same day this post was created. So yeah, I do recall now on my 1800X system, which is what I would have been using at that time, I did come across this problem and I solved it by disabling the GPU power monitor. So this problem came back to haunt me from the past and it came at the absolute worst time when I have to get a bunch of benchmarking done. 
So what I wanted to show you guys next was some side-by-side -side footage with the GPU power monitor disabled and enabled. The first game we'll take a look at is a Plague Tale Requiem, and you guys can see just how much smoother the gameplay is on the side showing the GPU monitor disabled versus the side that still has it enabled. It's absolutely astonishing to see, and I'll highlight that MSI Afterburner is a very common program that lots of people use and download. If you Google 7800X3D and 9800X3D stuttering problems, you'll come across loads of threads and I have a feeling that there's people out there that are running into the same problem but don't realize this could be the cause of their micro stutters. Another game we'll take a look at is Baldur's Gate 3. You can see there's a clear difference between both sides. The difference isn't as large as it was in a Plague Tale Requiem, but nonetheless there is still a difference and the degree to which this problem affects games will vary. This is just unfortunate to see because these are pretty useful stats to be able to monitor and as a channel that tests hardware and shows benchmarks, being able to utilize them so I can give you guys more insight on how components perform is beneficial to everyone. But for now, I'm going to have to leave them disabled. I am going to be digging further into this and seeing if other third-party software has the same issues. If we use Hardware Info 64 in tandem with Afterburner, will that work? So at least I still have an alternative. At the end of the day though, I'm just happy that I was finally able to discover what was causing this system to micro stutter like that in various games. This problem seriously had me stressed out. I'm glad it wasn't a bigger issue where I'd have to resort to a different OS install or different versions or worse, have to RMA hardware. Alrighty guys, so I hope you all learned something from this video. Let me know if you had run into issues like this for yourself and that's going to be wrapping it up for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.